Well, it's good to see everybody here tonight. Psalms 91. Well, I was told we was going to have one song and a sermonette, and since we didn't have one song, we're not going to have a sermonette. No, I'm teasing. Somebody, some, one of my teenagers asked me this morning, do you know who's going to win? And I, I prayed all day, and I got the prophecy from God. You ready? Go get your book at agency. Maybe you can still call it in and make money. <laughs> Straight from the throne room of God. Whoever has the most points, that's who's going to win. <laughs> I guarantee if that don't come true, you can stone me. <laughs> that's right. Anyway, everybody's talked about going down there this week, and I hadn't. So before I preach, I'm going to tell you, we went down there Friday. And um, a lot of things good about that whole thing. I wished everybody could have gone. We get spoiled, church. We just do. We, we don't mean to. We just wind up taking everything for granted. We go out there and crank up the car. We don't even think about it till it don't crank. And then we fuss like God's mistreating us. Um, I mean, just we fuss about uh, the house needs another coat of paint or it's leaking in one spot or I need a new refrigerator or the stove's messed up. And they, 65% of the county was affected by that. Stayed on the ground 77 miles at E3. Two trailer parks, over 168 trailers, was not just damaged, destroyed. There was one 18-wheeler picked up, throwed a half a mile, and landed on a house trailer they had to cut the woman out of from underneath it. And then we complain about the little things. It's just, yeah. I'm telling you, we just get that way. I don't know why we do. We just take things for granted. And, and then we get to see it. The first road we turned down, there was trash literally built up from one end of it all the way to another, at least six, ten foot tall, just trash just where people was bringing their stuff, their parts of their houses, and just down both sides of the street. It just amazed me. And then when we got to that church, and it just blowed apart. I mean, blowed a block, too. It just blowed apart. Um, and then the man, when he got out, and I said, Brother, how, what y'all going to do? He said, I don't know. He said, but I do know one thing. God has never done one thing wrong. Did he ever say that? Amen. Didn't he? He said he's never done nothing wrong, and he'll take care of us. Yeah. And boy, I'm telling you, I was, but I, I just brought me back down to where my mind's supposed to be at. We deserve everything bad, y'all. That's just the way, this flesh that we live in, it don't deserve no good. And wow. God just being full of grace, covering us with that blanket of grace, supplying us more than we'd ever needed. And the things that we've even dreamed that we thought we'd want when we was kids, we got ten more than that. I mean, we just bless people. We just yeah. bless beyond compare. We ought to come into this church being thankful every time we walk in the yeah. doors. Yeah. And um, the man had to take. We wanted to see us how. I mean, we wanted to see the church that was blown away. You know, the first place he, place he took us to is the church that another church was going to give him to have church in. And the church just got it given to him in November. He turned around to me and Brother Scott and he said, he said, God knowed I would need it, so he gave it to them so they could let me use it. Yeah. And he had to take us through the whole thing, Sunday school classrooms and all. He was so proud, so thankful. Well, I love the Lord tonight. Turn your Bibles to Psalms 91. You know, we get up here and we preach without asking this, and sometimes we ought to ask this, but anything anybody want to brag on the Lord about? Amen. Yep. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And he does give me more than I deserve, and I thank him for it. 
Amen. 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 Better. Amen. Amen. If the preacher sees the grace of God in Brother Tommy, I see the patience of God in your mama. Amen. I thank God that I'm saved. You know, you know one thing, parents? You know how you pray over your kids every time they go somewhere? In your mind, you just say, you might say a quick prayer. Do you know how many cars pass them when they're in their car? That close to death. Yeah. Every time a car passes by, that close to death. Has God not been good? Psalms 91, verse 14. I sure really appreciate the testimonies. I sure like to hear them. And I'll be honest with you, I need them. Anytime you have one, you ought to, you ought to disrupt the whole service just to get to say it. I need it. Tell my own way to God. Yes, sir, read on, preacher. But my horn shall lie exalt like the horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. You may. Next page. Thank God for the fresh oil. Makes all kind of oil, make all kind of stuff. But you and I couldn't make it without the fresh oil. Amen. That fresh oil's got the most fragrance too. Yeah. All right, verse fourteen. Y'all ain't rushing it. That as much as I love football. I could literally don't hold the light to what God does in the house of God. Anyway, verse 14. I want you to notice before we get started with, uh, in 91 that whoever wrote this, penned this down in Psalm 91, they really don't know. They think it might be Moses and who's they. I really don't know. They call them the smart people. Um, way above my pay grade but but they don't know nobody knows and they even say that to start with they don't really know but they think and this kind of stuff and it really don't really even matter because the Holy Spirit took the hand of a man and moved his fingers to write what we needed to know but all I want you to know is to start with it's wrote to where a person is talking to first of all about himself and what God will do, then it jumps over to what God will do for you. But when it gets down to 14, God himself starts talking. Yeah. And maybe if that will help you as we go. God says, Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Yes. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Lord, tonight I thank you yes. for everything that you've done in our lives. I thank you for how you blessed us more than we ever deserved. Lord, I do pray for Brother Aaron as he starts his uh, 29th year in a strange church. Lord, that you'd bless him and his church. Lord, as they ride by and see that place just totally destroyed, Lord, I pray that you'd lift their spirits up, that you'd yes. strengthen and encourage them. Help us, Lord, to keep our hearts and minds on you. Help us to be a thankful people. And Lord, I pray that you'd help me as I preach tonight. Lord, that you'd use me one more time. I thank you for your goodness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The first verse, in verse 14, it starts out with God speaking. It's just like this. Because He, now if you want to make it personal, which is what I love to do 
when I read the Bible, I try to put me in it as much as possible. Because you, boy, and there's some days that I don't, I already know that, but because you have set his love, your love, upon me. I want you to look at that and just think about it a while. The main part of that is not just the love that you have that God has put inside of you to love God. The Bible says we can't even love till God loves us. Yeah. We love Him because He first loved us. 1 John chapter 4, 19. Yeah. Okay, so first He loves us and it shows then what we see what He's done. We see His works about us. We see His plan of salvation and how it was set. And all that, John 3, 16, for God so loved, we understand that His love, He has done some things and moved mountains and blessed us like He has. Then we turn around and say, man, God really, really does love me. And when you realize that and when you grasp the love of God, then your love turns around and goes, I love you. And so if you take that over Ephesians where it's talking about a man and his wife and the man loving the wife, nowhere in that verse, because it's a picture, the, uh, a man and a woman getting married, it pictures the love of God to his bride. Yeah. Nowhere in there does it say for the woman to love the man. It kind of blows your mind. But it goes in that the man should love the woman. Because the love of the woman's going to follow as long as you're loving the woman. She'll love you back if you love her. Uh, the people of God will pour out their love to God the more they see the love of God poured out on them. Now can I tell you, God's love don't change. <laughs> he loves just because He loves. Why, He is love. So He loves. So here we are, God from the very beginning, from the very set of this thing, before they, well, while they was talking before creation ever even started, this thing was started because He loved. Yes. So when He started created, He created because He loved. And so He created man and He fell in love with man and He just loved him with everything that He had. But then his heart hurt for the man because the man didn't have nobody to pour his love out on. Right. So because he loved the man, then he made the woman. I know us men think it's because God didn't love us, but it was because he loved us. Yes. We like to tease that way, but really, we do love y'all women most of the time. And so here we are. In the picture of this thing, God doing all this down through the ages of time and everything he's done was because out of love. Did you know he throwed man and woman out of the Garden of Eden because of love? Did you know if they'd have ate of the other tree, they'd have lived forever in sin? What a sad state to be in. So he throws them out and so because of love, then love then built an ark. Love sent the rain. Love sent the flood. You say, that had to be judgment. That's love. Amen. Gave man a fresh start again. So all of you look down through it, it all winds up because of how God loved. And then we get over there where Jesus was born. That was because of love. And then when he let Jesus die, that was because of love. And then when he rose Jesus out of the grave, why, well, that was love. And then, I don't know what year you got saved in, but when I got saved in 71, that was love. Yes. Uh, when he went home and started creating a mansion for me, that was because of love. And so the more that I recognize it, the more I want to start loving the Lord for all he's done for me. And I start thinking of all the prayer requests that I've done all through my whole life. And I can go through the major ones, and you've seen most of them as my church family, that God has answered my prayer along life's way all because he loves me. I didn't have to have them things. I could have went through this life, Brother David, without a wife. I don't know, don't think at all I'd enjoyed it as much, but because I've asked for it and I desired of it, God gave me a woman, not even just any woman, but the woman that God wanted me to have, that I needed to have. That's out of love. 
I've now had two homes, three homes if you count a mobile home in my life. And I'm just as tickled to death with my mobile home as my house now. God's blessed us. We've had more cars than we rightly deserve. I think my grandpa lived his whole life with just two. I've had way more than that. God's blessed me. And so now if I'll realize how much God loves me, then my love will get turned back toward Him. And so then He can, if I'll really set my love upon Him, that the main word there is set. Brother David, we're wishy-washy. I'll love him one minute. I'll be up one minute. And boy, you're just great. You're the best God that's ever been. Why, you bless me. Why did you hate me so bad? Why did you do that to me? I mean, I've done everything that I could possibly do for you, and you still mess with my kids that way? Why, you took uh, my first grandson when he was about three months old, and you took him? Why did you do that? Why, God, He's so wonderful. He's just the best thing that ever. You ought to have been there. I mean, He's blessed and He's done this. Why'd you give me them heart attacks? That wasn't right and I don't appreciate it. And you took my house and there ain't a lick of love in that. Now, where are you at? That's us. There's no love that is set in stone. There's nothing that's been established. And the older that I get, the more that I realize that it starts needing to not just be love, but it needs to be love that's set. Yeah. I've been married 31 years, and my love for Carol has grown. I've been saved for, what, 43 years now. My love for God has grown. When he sat here and talked about the love, he didn't say, Brother Tony, that it had to be a perfect love. It didn't say that. It didn't say it had to be a love that just don't love all the way. It just said that he set his love upon him. Can I tell you, if we ever learn just to be settled, and I love God, come hell or high water, I love the Lord. I learned that watching that man this weekend. I mean, you ought to have seen him when he talked. You could just tell when he talked about God, it was real. It wasn't like we do, you know, hey, I love God. Yeah, he's something. No, boy, it was real. It was coming from the heart. In the midst of destruction, it was coming from the heart. Yes. So here we are, set his love upon me. And this is what God, I believe, is going to do for Brother Aaron just because he set his love upon him. And this is what I really want to get to in the message. Because he has set his love upon me, there are seven things God said he will do. The Bible says that he will deliver him. I don't know if you've ever been delivered from anything. Boy, I sure have. I, I remembered one time that, uh, Brother Tom, when I was a kid, I was stupid, okay? Still ain't real smart, but when I was a kid, I was real dumb. Brother Tony, I thought one day that there was six of us. We thought we'd be really stupid. We didn't think it was stupid. We thought it was fun. We'd go out there on the main highway, the four-lane highway, and throw an egg and see if we can hit a car. It was a police car. <laughs> and us being stupid, I was only like 14. I was standing under the street lamp, so you couldn't see the car. You see, it was lights coming at you. <laughs> when I got about right there, the car come underneath the street lamp, and I could see the car lights on top, and I'm like, and it left, and we got caught a week later. And he said he was going to run us to jail. He read me my rights. Oh, I cried like a baby, Brother Allen. And Daddy's standing there, and he's looking real mean at us, and the police is just going crazy. And he says, no. He said, your Daddy already pleaded your case. He said he'd take you home. And at first, I thought, delivered. My daddy has saved me. And then I thought, death. <laughs> Y'all, I was, when the Lord come by my way, and I realized I was a lost man, I was on my way to hell, he delivered me yes. from my sin, from my shame. From the penalty of sin, which was death, hell, I've been delivered. 
There's things sometimes that I allow my mind to get involved and I, I get chained down again. Now I'll let the things of this world chain me up again and here come God again. Even after salvation and He'll come deliver me out of them things. All because I have set my love upon Him. Ain't God so good? God did that. If you look at the next one in verse 14, it goes on like this. Because He hath set His love upon me, therefore would I deliver him, and I will set him on high. Now to me, that's kind of two part. One part is, y'all, when the day that you love the Lord, and very, trust me when I tell you this, when you got saved, your love for God was very little. You didn't know a lot about him. All you know that he was there. If you, if you was like me, it was just daddy's friend, and he was a good person, and he died on the cross for me, and and a boy, if I ever asked him to be saved, you know, remember I was eight, I didn't have to know a whole lot. And so, boy, if I'll just ask him to forgive me of my sins and mean it from the depths of my heart and say, Lord, will you save me? And so that little bit of love grew a little bit and I asked the Lord to save me and he did. Did you know he set me up on high? He gave me a place called heaven. One day it's mine to go to. It's already mine, Brother Richard. I just get to go see it sometime. Yes. I'll either have to take my last breath or either the Lord's going to come back and I'm going to shout my way there. Either way, I'm going to get to go where He is going to set me on high. That is a huge, big deal. But if you really read it and you put it in the context of the Scripture, it is setting you on high above your enemies to where your enemies can't get to you. He's going to set you on high. He's going to exalt you to a place where your enemies can't get to you no more. Oh, they might be able to destroy the flesh. They might be able to tear down something. But that's about all they can do. They cannot rob the things that God has done for you. They cannot take it away. Why? Because you've been set on high. We got a good God. The Bible says in Psalms 40 verse 2 that He brought me up also out of a horrible pit. He's gave me a place of defense. He put me on a rock that's higher than any other place. He put me out of reach of danger or out of my enemy. I've been set up on high. And the more that I keep my love on God, the more that I'll realize that. If you look at the third thing in verse 15, he shall, now the Bible says this, that's about us now, he shall call upon me. Now I want you to put this together with something. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. Now if you get put that all together, it's three things that's on our side for us to do. It is because he has set his love upon me, because we have set our love upon him, and because he's known my name. Now if you go to 1 John chapter, it's either 5 or 4, it says that if you don't know God, you can't love God. And if you don't love God, you don't know God. Amen. They, to know God and to love God is two things that's got to go hand in hand. You'll never love God without knowing him and you'll never know God without loving him. It goes hand in hand and that's why it's in the same verse. You ever going to want to love God a little more than what you do now? Start knowing Him. Start understanding Him. Say, well, I don't know all His names. Just put some names in there that fits what fits you. The God that delivered me and moved me to the mountains. Uh, the God that watched over me and woke me up and fed me this morning. Just, hey, it'll fit. It's how they come up with a lot of the ones they've come up with in the Word of God. How's He helped you? Make that His name. Man, and then when, and then, the, then that next one, He hath called upon me. That's a two, time, two ways of calling right there. The old time ways when you used to go see a girl, you know what you would say? I'm going to go call on Miss Carol. In other words, I'm just going to go see her. In other words, I'm just going to sit with her. In other words, I'm just going to talk to her. In other words, I'm just going to ask the daddy, can I just kind of sit beside her, you know, with a Bible between us, something like that. Whatever it is, I'm going to go call upon Carol and hope she wants to call on me. Hey, can I see your daughter? No. She says, no, you can't see her. There, man. You ought to call upon God every once in a while. You ought to go want to go by and see him. You ought to want to hold his hand. You ought to want to sit beside him. You ought to want to look at him, touch him, hold him. I guarantee you he won't say no. He ain't wanting to say you. Call upon him. And that just goes back to prayer. Just plain, simple prayer, Tom. Nothing simple. 
I mean, nothing fancy and just out of the banks. Just, Lord, how you doing today? Heaven going all right? Yeah. No, it's rough down here. Two weeks ago, I had to climb in a septic tank. No, God, it's terrible down here today. It's not real good, but thank God for my job. It pays the same. And then he just talks back with you. When's the last time you called on God? This is what he said he'd do if you set your love and when you call upon him. He says, and I will answer him. There's a lot of times, there's a lot of people that talk to me all the time and say, Brother Tim, would you pray? Help me to come up with the, I need an answer from God. And so I sure, I'll pray, and I pray all I can. But sometimes, boy, I'm crawling off in the corner, and I want an answer too. And so I'll tell them. I say, well, while I'm praying for you, you pray for me. And then, and then I tell them stuff like this. I, I, I'm really needing a billboard. I want to make sure that I'm doing right by God. I, I want to make sure I'm in God's will. So when you pray, boy, you pray that God will send down a billboard right in front of me when I'm driving, and it thumps me in the head and says, this is my answer. So then I can know. But the Bible says he will answer you. Brother David, you ever got your wife mad at you to where you had to go rob a bank? <laughs> and she don't talk to you for three days? It's a miserable life. You ever had it where God not talked to you? The Bible says if you'd set your affections on him, if you set your love on him, said he'll answer you. He didn't say he might answer you. He said he will answer you. Yeah. Did you know if you're really wanting to hear from God, sometimes a no is just as good as a yes. It makes it feel so good just to hear his voice. Did you ever been where you hadn't heard from God in six months? So a whooping from God is a blessing from God. Because yeah. then you know that he's at least messing with you again. And the Bible says he will, he will answer you. Well, Lord, how about it? No. Well, how about this? Maybe. Well, how about that? Okay. Well, can I have it now? Not now. Yes, sir. Ain't it good just to be able to hear from God, just to hear, set your love on the Lord. Set it there. Okay? Uh, verse 15, And he shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. Not just good in a good time. We don't have a God that just gets around us when everything's going right and we got a dollar bill in our pocket and we can buy them a pack of cigarettes. This is a God that will hang with you while you're in trouble. Yes. Now the Bible says in, the, in verse 11 that he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Ain't that a big deal? But here the Bible says when you're in trouble, he goes one step further. It's almost like this. Excuse me, angels, I got this one. I don't mind you watching over them, supplying their needs. I don't mind you watching over them to keep their uh, toes stumped. I don't mind watching you watching over them, making sure their car stays on this side of the road and that car stays on the road. But now, whoa, 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 angel, they're in trouble. Now it's my turn. I want to help Tim because he's in trouble. That's my job. He loves me, not you. I'm sorry, but he loves me, and he set his love on me, so I got him now. Step back. <laughs> Hallelujah. I like that. I got angels, but when I'm in trouble, I got God. You know what the key is? Setting my love on him. Setting my love on him. Uh, because he hath... No, no, no. I will be with him in trouble, and I will deliver him... There goes that deliverer again. Twice, and in, and in two verses, two times he says, I'm going to deliver. Do you think God's wanting to deliver you? And I will honor him. Let me give you some stuff that I wrote down about how he's going to honor you. This might help you. 1 John chapter 3, 2. Now, now this is how you're honored. Now our children were... Uh, now are we... The sons of God. When you set your love upon God, He just makes you sons of God. Let me show you another one. Romans chapter 8, verse 17. The Bible says we're the children, uh, 8, 17. We're the children of God. We're the heirs of God. 
And we're joint heirs with Christ. Yes. You think that's good enough honor, Miss Mandy? Not only am I just a son of God, that means I, I could, the low end, I could have been the low end of the child of God, but he wasn't satisfied with that. He says, I'm an heir of God. Boy, that brings me up a little higher. And then I'm a joint heir with Christ. Yes. Joint. I, I, always, I always mention that, but it always gets me excited, and I like to mention that. To him that overcometh will I grant, Revelation 3.21, see if this don't help you. Revelation 3.21 to him that overcometh, and he's talking to the church in Revelation, to him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne. Yes. Can you slide over Jesus? You're taking up too much room. <laughs> hey, I, Brother Tony, I'm sitting with him he didn't say around the throne. He said in the throne. With him. Yes. Boy, that's how he's going to honor me. If I just set my love upon him, I get to sit with him in his throne. Now, I'd really like to shout there. Anyway. You know, if they can say, yay, touchdown, I would be able to yell something. Verse 16. With long life will I satisfy him. Long life will I satisfy him. Now here's the thing, when you get to studying that, if they're right what they said, the long life is not always necessarily meaning one from a hundred. One guy even said this, it's a shallow mind that sees a long life in years. Full life. A full life where you're satisfied with it. Where you just look around at your life and you just see how God's blessed you so much, so deeply, that you go, I'm satisfied. Let me give you a quote of an old preacher. He said, A man may die young and yet die fool. Couldn't have gave him nothing else. He was satisfied with every part of his whole life. And everything, I'll be honest with y'all, if with everything that is God has blessed me with, Miss Marvin, with everything that God has given me, watched over me, and supplied me. My, my, my two precious kids, and now I've doubled it. Got a grandkid on the way if God still tarries to let it be born. The church that God has put me in all along life's way to get me to where I'm at. My mama and daddy, to, to me, was the best mom and daddy a boy could ever have. My in-laws, I've heard all these stories about in-laws. I had the best in-laws that a man could ever get. I've got the best wife, the best kids, I've got the best church, I've got the best everything. If God literally was to take you, and I have people ask me all the time, with all the heart attacks, ain't you scared of dying? Not yet. Now maybe if I was literally <coughs> grasping for my life, I might be. But as far as yet, not none. None. I am a satisfied man with everything. Everything, Miss Gwen, God has done for me. I'm wholly satisfied. Yes. We're not never going to get that million dollars. I'm satisfied. I'm satisfied. I'm not never going to get a truck as good as Brother Scott had that I got to ride in Friday. But I am satisfied. That's for rich people. Us poor folks, we get them old ones. The Bible says that God makes them rich and he makes them poor. And you just learn to be satisfied with what you got. Yeah, and I'm a satisfied man. The last thing he says, and I will show him my salvation. Now this ain't talking about a man that's not saved from the beginning because this man's saved from the beginning. So what's he talking about? The final works of salvation. Preacher preached on it this morning. One day, when you either take your last breath 
or you get to see him in the air either one day, he's going to show you the fruits of salvation and he's going to bring you up in heaven and he's going to say, impressed? Do you like it? Did you get a kick? When I built my wife a set of cabinets one time, our mobile home got flooded, so it destroyed our old particle board cabinet. So I hid one cabinet from her, and I had it all glass front. She can hang all them. You remember them dishes I told you about, them wedding dishes that you don't never use? She could put them all, display them. And she didn't know it. And when I stuck it in the house, boom, when I put it all up there, and it's a big old thing, it just built into the wall, I said, I looked at her and I went, do you like it? And she was like this. <sighs> God's going to take you up into heaven and show you heaven, okay? He's going to show you the final part of salvation. And he's going to look at you and go, you like it? <laughs> what do you think you're going to do? No. No, you're going to be like, <laughs> I, you know, the Bible says we can't even talk about some of it. We can't even describe some of it. There's no way that we, the, it's, all of it's not even been told. And, it, and what we do know amazes just, just what we know. And so the stuff that we don't know and we hadn't seen, and it's a sin to even talk about it. What do you think it's going to be when we get to heaven? We're going to be like, wow! This is it? Yep. What about that, Kevin? That's Brother Thomas. Okay. What about that, Matthew? That's Miss Glenda's for putting up her by the time. She's going to be running around her mansion. Ah! Now, just the things in heaven that we're going to see, the rainbow around the throne, the lightnings coming to and fro and going out, and the people shouting and hollering and having a good time and kneeling down and shouting and the angels and everything going crazy, that's going to be so exciting, but not to have one worry, not to have one evil thought, uh, not to have one bad thing happen in our lives, not even to stub our toe or, or to get a splinter or no stickers or no nothing. We don't have to work for our food. The king of the earth will we be bringing them into us we're going to be fat little pigs up in our mansions we're going to be having us a time can you see how good heaven's going to be and the Bible says that's our salvation Amen. hallelujah all because we set our love on him so then the thought would be how's our love for God tonight once you hear what God will do, what God said, I will do, and God never lies. How's your love for God? Have you set, set your love on Him? Can I give you just a little hint of what that is, and then we'll close her down. Just a, it'll be short. What? A billion women on the world? I could care about none of them as far as being married to them, loving them that way, none. Because I've set my love on her. In other words, every, the rest of them has all fell to the wayside because I have set my love on her. She's it. Setting your love on God. Does everything else fall by the wayside? All them other little G-gods running around. All them other little G-gods driving, I mean, nice trucks sitting out there. And all them things that you just, your job, your money, your everything, that everything else that you can set your affections on. Does it get in the way of God? I don't know. How's your love for God? Carol, would you come to piano? Sitting there thinking about that while I was studying today. Would y'all please stand? And I got to thinking, the first thing I thought about was this right here. My first thought of this whole thing was what God said he'd do. That was just going to be the message, just that. Because if God said that he would do something, if he says he will do something, do you not think he'll do it? 
But the first line, the very first line starts out like this. Because. Because of what? Because he hath set his love upon me. Yes. Therefore. You would, right there is actually grace for grace. So if I know that God will do all this stuff, what's my part? Set my love on Him. How's your love for God tonight? How's your love for God? Do you love Him with everything you have? To love the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength. How is it? Do we need to get closer to God? Do we need to love Him more? Do we need to pour out our love on Him more? I don't know. But I do know one thing, our love can grow. It can grow. You ought to ask him for your love to grow for it. That'd be it. If you feel like praying, this is your time. There's no other name so sweet as Jesus. No one ever cared so much for me. Amen. But as to shed his precious blood That's to true. save me, no one ever cared so much for me. Amen. There's no Okay. 